Hey guys, this is Eric Wanger with Wanger Racing. A little update. Um, you might remember a few videos ago I did an AFR 210 stock and I messed with the rocker stud to see how far it affected flow. Well, that was actually for a customer that wanted them ported. So now I have the results after porting. So we'll go, this head's already on the bench, but I'll show you that it's matching pair. Now I haven't cleaned them in the washer, so they might be a little dirty. But you can kind of see, um, just to recap, these are the AFR 210s, they're the race ready one. They're not the competition ports. Um, what I've done to them is I've ported them, but let me explain some of the process. First, um, I cut them out to a 210 uh, intake valve, kept the one 600 exhaust valve. Now, from the factory, they'll come with a 45 degree valve job and on both, now they're both 50. And the reason why is this guy's gonna run nitrous, so it helps on the exhaust flow. And also, I actually really do like the 50 degree valve jobs. Um, especially if I have a lift more than 600, it seems like it helps. The only other thing done to it that might affect flow is these are just surface. It was like six thousandths to clean them up because they had been used before. So that's for that. Um, like I said, they still need to be washed. But um, port wise, I made them quite a bit bigger. I'm hoping this doesn't tip over. Yeah, it's going to tip back up. Um, you can kind of see. I won't go into the exact, exact dimensions because I like to keep some stuff to myself. Um, but it gives you some idea on the shape. But this is a brass tube because I actually poured it through where the head bolt hole is. That's pretty common for me. But I'll go ahead and warn you. When I do the valve jobs, I do the valve job first. And I vacuum test and make sure they're sealed up before I done any port work. And of those, just a heads up for any of you guys out there, like I've got a mysterious water leak. They were actually cracked right here where that was from the aluminum anyway. So even though before I put this that tube in there, they were already cracked from the factory just from the heat and stuff. At least two of them were. So it wasn't a big deal. If your head bolt sealed up, then it will never be an issue anyway. But I always like to put them in because I've seen it actually gain horsepower from having those in. So there's your shape. So pretty much what I've done is 210 valve. I then ported to make the bowl bigger, made the throat bigger, of course, and then also reworked the short side and hoping to get an idea that way. I also did open up the pinch. I'm sorry about the weird cameras. I'm flipping the head around. I also opened up the push rod pinch a little, not as much as you might think because um, there's only a few ways to do it. So I'm setting this head down real quick. There's only a few ways to, to do it properly or to do it right. You can either make it wider this way or taller. So it's gonna stay at 1206, so it really can't go taller. This floor kind of zoops up, which I could adjust by making it lower here and then kind of going that way, but I didn't really want to do that just because of the way it is further down the port. And also I'll be honest, I'm a little gun shy with the AFR heads about hitting water. Brodix, I know there's waters forever and a day away. It'd be pretty hard to hit it, but on the AFR, I've hit it before. So I, I'm more gun shy. So I've been more aggressive with these heads before, but on this one, I have since been a little bit more tame. It also changed how I did some of the short side port work just because I was more worried I might get water, even though I'm fairly certain I'm probably just really, really, really safe. But anyway, I did open up this slot. Part of that is I thinned out the wall here so I wouldn't have to take out so much from this side. It still is a pretty small pinch, like 2.4. Um, the only way I could see to make it bigger is to grind more from this side, but I'm not trying to break through. And AFR makes it a pain in the rear if I actually did break through because if you notice, this is all aluminum through here. So if I break through here, I don't do like other people do. If you've seen some head porters, they just epoxy in there. It's a little head, welded up. That's the proper way to do it. The epoxy eventually will crack or come out, period. So um, what I like to do is I will, if I break through or if it even starts blistering, I'll weld there and then I'll grind it back so it's the right dimensions. I'll check it on my mock-up block, make sure the push rod's not gonna rub, then also get in here. But because they put this, they left this huge chunk, hopefully I can see this better. This whole part here is all aluminum, and that's where your push rod goes through. You can't get a welding torch in here, so the only way to do it properly would be coming in with an end mill, cut all that out, so I can get a torch in there to actually, if I had to weld something up. So I hate that about the AFRs. The only ones that doesn't do that is a 245. They actually mill all that out, thank God. But anyway, that's a random rant on that. So there's that. So um, port work, bowl bigger, bigger intake valve, bigger throat. We work the sort side. Sorry if I'm not giving you a whole lot of stuff. I do want to keep some of it to myself. Um, there's that, but what does it actually gain? Okay, well, let's look over. Here we are. 
This is the stock flow number. So this is the AFR stock. Okay. You notice it flowed right at 295. So not bad at six. This is the port numbers. This is the exhaust, and that's um, exhaust here, intakes at the top, so stock, ported. As you can tell, it gained quite a bit. So really good number. So now it's peaking at 327 CFM. That's at 700. And then this, by the way, is from the Sanyo's bench, 4155 bore. It starts dropping off. The exhaust flow, if you notice, it's actually down a little bit here, then it starts picking up. It might be easier if I show you the differences, so let's go to this page. There you go. These are the differences. So you got your stock ported, and this is the difference. So if we look at the intake, the only spot it actually lost was that one tenth of an inch valve lift. Everything else was a gain. And if you look, it gained 43 CFM at one inch of valve lift. No, I've already had my discussion about that, but 42 also at 700. So really good gains. The exhaust, on the other hand, I made the throat bigger on the exhaust too. So it's 90% throat. I'm not giving that away. On the exhaust, and it's a 50 degree valve seat. I really, the exhaust flow numbers are almost pointless, but just to show you, it did pick up. So um, just not down low, which honestly, it's better that it doesn't pick up here because that's also, if it, usually if it flows better here, the exhaust port's more likely to have reversion problems. So this actually is pretty good. So not bad, very good pickup. But for fun, or not fun, I just flowed the same head on my Superflow bench because all this is from the Sanyas. This is actually what it flows on the Superflow. Same head, didn't change anything, just bolted it on. If you notice, it picks up quite a bit. Now it's 330. And then it, this is what's really weird between the two benches. If you look at the numbers, this one on the Sanyas, it hits 327 to 700. And the flow actually starts dropping. You're like, why is that happening? The port's still kind of small. And I'm, like I said before, I'm kind of gun shy to making it bigger about hitting water. Not that I don't mind welding it up to fix it, but the customer wants to race and I don't want to hold them up by me repairing it. So um, I could be more aggressive and it probably could be fine and probably wouldn't drop any flow there. But I, I just, I took it more conservative. I'll straight up tell you. But anyway, on the Superflow, or sorry, on the Sanyas, it starts backing up and this port's pretty fast. But if I float on my Superflow, it does the opposite. It actually starts picking up flow. So you're like, well, which one do you trust better? Probably this one, because I, I don't have a recording of me flowing the head. Um, one, because I don't have a GoPro and my wife doesn't want to hold a camera during this stuff, but this port's loud. So you might say, well, is that gonna make any power? It's definitely gonna pick up from what it had. It's just not as perfect as I like it to be, but it's kind of in the limitations of this casting. I know I can get more, but there's a big difference between telling someone, hey, this thing's phenomenal, and, or calling them and telling them, hey, man, I got to fix a water leak. So one way or another, this head's still just going to pick up. I mean, you look it up, just to give you an idea, you see 42 CFM a gain. Even if you gain one horsepower per CFM, that's 42 horsepower gain. It's probably going to pick up around 50. So... 50, 55, somewhere in that range. Very good pickup. But I thought I'd show you flow numbers for the from the Superflow on it and the Sanyas. And regardless, it picked up everywhere. So I'm sorry if I don't give you more details on the head. I do have to keep some st stuff secret. Um, the biggest thing I'm going to say, if you're choosing to port this head, the biggest thing that will help you out is one, a valve job. Um, don't get it done by someone that has just uh, no idea what flow numbers are, or doesn't have custom cutters. You need a proper one done. That's the biggest and then work the short side and try to get as much area in the pinch as you can. But remember, if you break through, it's going to be a pain to repair. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and talk to you later.